Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. This video, we'll be talking about gypsum materials, which is another important topic to know for the board exam, and a great follow-up to the impression materials video. So gypsum is mined as calcium sulfate dihydrate, and this is the chemical formula, calcium sulfate and two water molecules, which is where the dihydrate part of the name comes from. Now it's manufactured with heat in order to get rid of some of this water to become calcium sulfate hemihydrate, which refers to the half water molecule present in the chemical formula. So all of these gypsum products that we're going to be talking about in this video are chemically the same. They all have this formula right here, but they differ in the size and shape of the particles. And that's what really gives each of these gypsum materials a different, uh, different characterization when used in dentistry. So the five different versions of gypsum used in dentistry that we'll be going over today are these five. And they're conveniently listed type one through type five. Type one is impression plaster and how I remember this is that the one in the Roman numeral one looks an awful lot like the I in impression. So I remember that. Type two gypsum is model plaster. How I remember this one is that an M has two vertical lines on it. So that lines up with the two vertical lines of the Roman numeral two. So that's how I remember model plaster. Type three is dental stone. Type four gypsum is dental stone, but it's improved. It has high strength and low expansion. And type five gypsum is dental stone, high strength, high expansion. So the last three types are all forms of dental stone. The first two are forms of plaster. So let's go through each of these five types individually. But before we do, I want to talk about the significance of water, because all of these gypsum materials come in a powder form, and we have to mix water in order to activate them and to get them to set. So water is incredibly important. I want to define gauging water, which is extra water needed to obtain a workable mix of material and does not chemically react with gypsum. So in other words, the gypsum powder, that uh, calcium sulfate hemihydrate, chemically reacts with a set amount of water, but we also need some additional water, which we call gauging water, to make the product workable enough so that we can mix it with a spatula in a mixing bowl. So we can add more water or we can take away and have less water because the water makes the plaster or stone if we add a little bit more and more of it we increase the water to powder ratio we make the stone or plaster weaker because the gypsum particles will be farther apart from one another the more water we add in so we can think of having more water as making a thinner mix and a thin mix is going to be weaker, whereas a thick mix is going to be stronger. Now, likewise, if we have these gypsum particles farther apart from one another, there's going to be more porosity in the material. And this goes along with it just being an overall weaker mix, whereas less water will result in less porosity and those gypsum particles being closer together. Of course, you want to stick to as close as possible to the water to powder ratio uh, mentioned on the bag of gypsum powder. But if you wanted to mess around with the amount of water, this is what you could do. And this is what you could expect to happen if you add more or less. And like we talked about in uh, the last video, we talked about how we can manipulate setting time we can also manipulate setting time of the gypsum by increasing or decreasing the amount of water. So if we, a thin mix will increase 
the setting time, as well as decrease the amount of expansion that the plaster stone experiences as it sets. And the exact opposite is true for the other column. So again, like we talked about in the impression materials video, this is a really important this is really important information to know, and I would just focus on memorizing one of these columns, because as long as you know one of them, you just remember the opposite is true for the other. So let's dive into the type 1 gypsum, that's the impression plaster. So all of these gypsum materials are going to experience some amount of expansion during setting. That's just how it chemically works. But this one actually has the second lowest expansion of all five. It's used for mounting casts in an articulator, and I mean the verb form, mounting. So it's not the actual mounted casts, but it's this white stone, or white plaster I should say, that helps support the casts of the articulator. So we see impression plaster here and also here. It's not strong, it's a very weak it's a very weak gypsum material, and it wouldn't be sufficient for even making diagnostic casts as teeth could easily break off of it. The good news is it sets very quickly, and how I remember this, it has basically since it sets so fast, probably within five to ten minutes, if you have a fast set impression plaster, it has no time for expansion. So it's you can use that to remember that it experiences very little expansion. All right, type two, the type two gypsum is model plaster. And so model plaster is used to make casts that we can fabricate mouth guards and Essex retainers. These are those clear plastic retainers that you use following orthodontic treatment. Type three gypsum is dental stone. And dental stone is the actual stone that we see here used to create the mounted casts. So these can be used for diagnostic casts, for any sort of diagnostic purpose ranging from orthodontics to complex operative to fixed pros, and removable prostheses can be used, uh, can be made when using this kind of stone to create a diagnostic cast or even a working cast. Type 4 gypsum is dental stone, and I've abbreviated this high strength, low expansion, HSLE. And so type 4 stone is popular on the board exam because it has, in many ways, the best qualities of all the stones. So it has the best abrasion resistance, the, it requires the least amount of gauging water, and it has the least amount of expansion. So all of these things are really, really important and great qualities of the Type 4 stone. It's also used for fabrication of dyes, which we see pictured below. So a dye is the positive reproduction of a prepared tooth, and it always should be poured in an improved dental stone or some other material that allows for a very accurate representation of what the crown prep actually looks like in the mouth. And that's super important so that the crown that's made on the die can fit in the patient's mouth accurately. So we'll talk more about this uh, process of creating dyes, ditching dyes, and making crowns when we discuss the lab processing of crowns in a later video. And lastly, we have type 5 gypsum, which is dental stone, high strength, but this time high expansion. It's also used for the fabrication of dyes, but potentially not as helpful because it experiences high expansion. So gypsum, we when we're mixing it, we typically take about 20 seconds if we're using a vacuum mixer, or 30 seconds if we're mixing by hand in a mixing bowl with a spatula. The setting time for gypsum is approximately 45 to 60 minutes. Now I did mention before that using a fast set impression plaster or type one stone will set much faster in about five to 10 minutes. But the other forms of gypsum can take up to an hour to fully set. And you can contrast this to the setting time of something like alginate, which was only three to four minutes. 
after pouring it and letting it set, you can disinfect with a bleach solution, glutaraldehyde, or iodophore spray. So, setting time. I sort of alluded to this before, and we talked about this in the impression materials video. We talked about how you can uh, cause a faster or slower setting time for alginate. And the same is true for gypsum materials. So knowing what decreases or increases the setting time is really high yield information for the board exam. The great news about this is that the first two bullet points here, so the first two bullet points of both columns are identical to the setting time principles for alginate that we talked about in the last video which makes this nice and easy to generalize and memorize. So just like an alginate, using hotter water or using less water decreases the setting time. And the opposite is true for making the setting time longer. Now we have some additional information here. Use, the use of slurry water can also make the gypsum set quicker. And the reason slurry water acts as an accelerator is because slurry water is basically water that's been saturated with both calcium and sulfate ions, sort of the byproduct of having cut some casts and you just have this really saturated water. And remember, calcium sulfate is one of the main materials, one of the main chemical elements of gypsum. So if we have water that's very saturated with both of these ions, it's going to allow that material to set much quicker. It also, if we also increase the amount of time we're mixing the material, that will also decrease the setting time, allowing more of the gypsum, uh, the gypsum particles to interact with each other. All right, and this is uh, a great summary slide of all the things that we've talked about. So I think knowing the big overall trends are really helpful for these standardized exams. It's easy to get lost in the nitty gritty details, but you can remember the big trends, which usually provide enough information to answer what they're asking. So if we could make a general trend here, from type one to type five, we go from weaker to stronger gypsum material. So I have the arrow increasing with type five being the strongest material. In the opposite direction, we have porosity. So the least porous material is type 5. The most porous material is type 1. But remember that there's only one thing I would probably add to this slide, and it's to remember how important it is that type 4 has the best abrasion resistance, the least amount of gauging water, and the least amount of expansion, which help, luckily for us is in the name of the material itself. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'm really excited to announce that I recently launched my Patreon page. So if you're interested in supporting me there and unlocking extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and study from, go check that out. The link will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.